before you take out the uh, compression loader here, uh, one of the things you need to do is you need to make sure that your low speed compression is closed. So go ahead and turn it all the way up to six where it says firm. You're gonna need a two millimeter Allen wrench. And then this will just come right off. And be careful because there's little pieces in here that can fall out and get lost. Um, specifically, these. Just put a little bit of grease on these guys. And then with your Allen wrench, it sticks right to it. So it's easier to take these out without losing them. Now this just comes right off. And there are two more of those little balls in here. So you're gonna wanna be careful when you pry this up you see they're on either side. Just wanna, I just put my fingers there to make sure they don't go anywhere. So now, before you go and remove the compression loader from the fork, go ahead and take out the bleed screw here. To get this off, you need a 22 millimeter socket and uh, mine was a little too thick so I just took my Dremel and ground it down a bit to make it a little easier to fit in here. So it fits in nice right there. Go ahead and Just want to be careful you don't go too hard or too fast because otherwise oil can go everywhere. Now that we have the damper out, we can start taking it apart and uh, so just so you know, the, this is the bladder and the shim stack is right in here and this is the piston. So we're gonna be working on this section down here. But in order to get that off, uh, we first have to take these little screws out. This will come right off. Put that aside, don't need that anymore for now. And to remove uh, and to get everything apart, you're gonna need an eight millimeter hex wrench that just goes in here. And on this side, a 13 millimeter open face wrench, a regular wrench. And then this just comes right apart. You want to be really careful because there are springs in here and other little pieces that if they go flying. We take this apart. I'm going to be careful that I put everything back, put everything down in such a way that I know how to put it all back together. Now, if you look at the piston here, you'll notice this side the uh, silver piece is rounded. It looks a bit like a four leaf clover. And when we take it off, I'll make sure the shim stack doesn't come. Just gotta be careful, get the shim stack here. I want that to come off 
about falling everywhere because it's very important what order those are in. Um, so this piston, the stock position is like this with the, the four leaf clover shaped rounded ports facing away from the shim stack. So the shim stack was right in here and this uh, squared, more right angle looking um, silver piece, that is the part that faces against the shim stack. So you know you can very easily put it down and forget which way it goes and it makes a big difference which way this goes and I'll talk more about that later. So I'm gonna put this here, let me have this. And so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna work on our shim stack. So once you lay out the shims in the order that they are installed in the fork. Um, this is what it looks like. So you have the platform shim here, which goes up against the face of the piston, a ring shim with a centering shim. All this centering shim does is keeps the ring shim from, from sliding around. And then you've got a few of these shims, which are used for the high speed compression. And then this one is the um, clamping shim, which is used uh, mostly just to hold it all together. When I spoke to Ronnie at DVO, uh, there's a proven modification to the shim stack which allows for the, the fork to work better for less aggressive riders or lighter riders uh, by reducing the amount of high speed compression. And simply, all you do is you remove the ring shim and the centering shim and then the top two shims from the stack, not this, the clamping shim. You want to leave that one in there. And that is what he recommends doing if you want to reduce high speed compression. If it's still too stiff and you want to soften it up even more, then you can do what's uh, known as the piston flip. So instead of this side facing the shim stack, you'd flip it so that this side faces the shim stack. And that really softens it up. Uh, but what Ronnie recommends is not flipping the piston without modifying the shim stack. So there's three ways you'd want to run this fork. One is with the stock shim stack and the piston in the stock position just as the fork comes from the factory. Second would be to modify the shim stack like this. And then third, if you want to soften off even more, would be to flip the piston so that this side faces the shim stack. To put it all back together, pretty straightforward. We're just going to put the shims on in the reverse order. So the clamp shim. And then we'll go down the stack. Just like that. Again, when we put this back together, you want the piston to go on this orientation, the squared off corners facing the shim stack, not the rounded corners. So like this, go in here, then go ahead and put this guy back on down below. Make sure that's on nice and centered. So now I have to tighten this back up. I don't do it that tight. I don't know, five newton meters, not really sure. Just hand tight, maybe as tight as you would tighten stuff in your handlebars. Kind of just snug it up. And I want to make sure that my shim still centered in there. So now we put this back together and this piece will just slide over here and kind of fit in like that. And there we have it. It's all back together. This time with the shim stack 
uh, modified to reduce the high-speed compression. Next thing you do is just put it back in the uh, in the cartridge. I'm not going to do a full bleed. Uh, ideally, you do want to do that. Ronnie did say that replacing the oil that's in there with something lighter uh, would also make an improvement. Um, he recommends Driven SHX. The oil that I have is Motorex. They're both uh, about the same viscosity, around 14 centipoise. The Motorex is a 2.5 weight. And just so you know that not all um, not all weights are equal. So even though two oils might say they're both 2.5 weight, one might have a higher viscosity than the other. The viscosity is the important number. Okay, so let's go and put this back in. Before we put the cartridge back in, I'm going to ahead and add some oil. This is 2.5 weight Motorex cartridge oil. I'm only going to put about 10 milliliters in there. Yeah, maybe like seven or eight actually. So we're going to add more at the at the end to top it off and make sure we get all the air out. And when you go and put the cartridge back in, you want to make sure your low speed compression is closed. And then when the oil starts coming up towards the top, you can see it getting up there now. So now I'm going to go ahead and open it. I turn this clockwise, and if you can't quite grab it, you can use the adjuster or a four millimeter socket. Also gonna make sure that I have that bleed valve up at the highest point. What I'm going to do to try, because I'm not going to be able to do a full bleed, at least not now. And I didn't take the the whole cartridge out of the fork, which is probably a lot easier to do this. Probably do that next time. Um, so what I'm going to do is actually just put this screw back in temporarily. I'm going to do that. I'm going to go and kind of work the fork up and down. The idea is if there was air in there, now it should be sitting on the top of the cartridge. And when I open that bleed plug, what I can do is just put a little bit of oil to top it off using one of these syringes. I just have a few cc's of oil in the syringe. When you put the top cap back on, you need to make sure you're careful that you put this back so that the dial reads correctly. I left it in the open position, so I'm going to make sure I put it back uh, like, like this so that it reads the one and it does in fact turn the right direction.
and that's it.